than a week before Christmas and all through our land. A pandemic is spreading, a vaccine barely in hand. So the people of Broadway do what they're supposed to, in contrast to those whom the law is opposed to. We are still grateful to gather in new ways like Zoom and to proclaim of the one who will keep us from doom. So to you from the pulpit of his dear Broadway first, we proclaim our Lord Jesus, who's already dealt with our worst. It's all in the Bible, I'll trust to recall, what he promised he'd do in the wake of man's fall. It's now over and done, finished, he said, and then he went on to rise from the dead. Come join with us today as we herald his birth, an atonement to bring for all that it's worth. Our hope is secure, for it's founded in him. The light is so still shining, no matter how dim. Let us pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, light of light eternal, we gather together, both here and via Zoom, in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and King. We pray your blessing upon all of your people and all those who gather to honor and worship and adore him. We thank you for this special season. We thank you that you draw us to yourself and your light becomes brighter and brighter and help us to know that it has always been ever so bright and may it fill us and may it shine in and through us and to others. We pray all of these things in Christ's name. Amen. A warm welcome to, to everyone who's gathering with us. We've got very few people here in accordance with the criteria, but I thank them for their participation. Kent and Leanne are here, and Bob Griffin is here. He's going to be bringing us the message. And uh, Helen and I are going to be lighting the Advent candle. I've got a few messages to share with you before we begin our service today. The deadline for submissions for the January 2021 issue of Connections is next Sunday, December 27th. Be in touch with Susan Stevenson for that. Uh, the Wednesday evening Bible study and the Sunday evening prayer meeting, which uh, are normally done by Zoom, have been cancelled until January. The Bible study begins again on January 6th, and the prayer meeting begins again on January 10th. The link to the Zoom meetings will be sent out in early January. Uh, this, is, this is not an edict from our church. We encourage you to continue to be daily in the Word and, and in prayer uh, on your own. Please just refer to the, the formal studies on, on Zoom, which will resume in January. Um, and I've been asked to make mention of the donations to the Christmas hampers is still going on and you can read about that in your bulletin and you can also read about donating uh, during code red restrictions in your bulletin. We, we thank you for those who are participating in in that. Would ask that Helen would come up. Called to bear the wheat and through the promise. So, Mary, descendant of King David, sings when she receives word that she is to bear God's own son. She sings a song of ancient trust, a song of generations past and yet to come. She sings about God coming to fill the hungry and to lift the humble. She sings that love and truth will meet, that justice and peace will embrace. Here is Mary's song, The Magnificat. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the loneliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, 
He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the fourth candle of Advent, a candle symbolizing love and trust. Let us pray. To the Mighty One who has done great things, we pray for an open heart and unblocked ears, that we may hear the voices of the poor and oppressed, and act to share their struggle for justice. To God who helped His servant in remembrance of His mercy, we pray with longing that all may have the joy of the Magnificat as its promise is fulfilled with Emmanuel, God, among us, living in our hearts and acting in our lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. reading is uh, taken from the first chapter of Luke, beginning to read at the 26th verse. I'm reading from the New English Bible. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, with a message for a girl betrothed to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The girl's name was Mary. The angel went in and said to her, Greetings, most favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was deeply troubled by what he said and wondered what the greeting could mean. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for God has been gracious to you. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will be king over Israel forever. His reign shall never end. How can this be, said Mary, I am still a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. For that reason, the Holy Child to be born will be called Son of God. 
Moreover, your kinswoman Elizabeth has herself conceived a son in her old age, and she who is reputed barren is now in her sixth month, for God's promises can never fail. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it be as you have said. Then the angel left her. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. During this time of Advent, as we focus on loving, let us turn to his word as found in Psalm 1849. Therefore, I will praise you among the nations, O Lord. I will sing praises to your name. Let us pray. Our most heavenly Father, we cannot begin to thank you for all the wondrous things that you have provided to your people. Thank you for your continuing watch care protection over us, your people, especially those serving in frontline positions, those in health care, hospitals, nursing homes, firefighters, ambulance service, those in essential services otherwise, in grocery stores, truck drivers, etc. For those of those, for thank you for those who are responding in a positive manner during this difficult time, including but not limited to various political leaders within our city, province, and country. Thank you that Broadway First Baptist Church continues to receive the financial support needed during this time of closure. Thank you for providing us with the financial capability to provide assistance for those in need during these very troubling financial and socially challenging times. Thank you for those who continue to provide their time and talents in order that our services can be made available to a broader audience. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them hear from heaven 
and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Father, hear our prayer for those who have suffered the loss of loved ones without being able to be by their sides during this pandemic. Father, hear our prayer for those shut off from their loved ones, shut-ins, those in personal care homes and in hospitals. Father, hear our prayer that Broadway First Baptist Church may, even during these difficult times, demonstrate your love and support within our community and, and neighborhood. Father, hear our prayer for the different business ventures which are suffering both financially and emotionally during these difficult times. Father God, hear our prayers. In his name we pray, most glorious, amen. say that I'm being recorded in front of a live studio audience and it's a bit of a weird feeling but it's good to see people here and unfortunately I can't see you I can see me and I don't know if that's a good thing or bad but I do know there's people out there somewhere ah you know it's been three months since I got my hair cut is hard to deal with. I'm starting to look a bit like a sheepdog. I think probably one of the better things about it is that I can hide things in my hair. You know, if I'm playing with my cell phone and then my boss comes in, I can stick the cell phone in my hair. Nobody will know this. And you know, it's been one of those strange week where if you want things to work out well, it's not going to. Now, yesterday, I walked down to a laundromat to do some laundry, and I probably was the only one that found the dryer that didn't work. Put my clothes in, stuck a bunch of coins, I had to take my clothes back, they were all wet. But I guess this is what you call first world problems. 
And these are things that kind of stick to us, right? You know, all the stress that we have. But I don't think my life is really full of that much stress. I think I tend to make it worse than it actually is. The fun part about this week is, unfortunately, I got called into work because, you no, know, somebody decided on Friday night to come into the store and rob it. Nobody got hurt, not, nothing much was taken. But you know, it's a still a bit, a bit of an unsettling unsettling feeling when something like that happens. But it is December, and I think we do expect weird things to happen this month. And you know, for a lot of people, this is not the easiest month in the world, is it? It could be quite stressful. Now, one of the blessings about my job is I do work alone, and with the new restrictions, things are a little bit slow now. So I don't have a lot of customers in my store. But there is times when I'm all alone, nobody's around. I think I'm gonna sing. Nobody can see me, nobody can hear me. So I'm just gonna belt out a few hymns. Well, you know, it's Christmas time, isn't it? So I end up singing Christmas songs. But the problem with Christmas songs is they make me think, you know, for one, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Really? December? Is this really the most wonderful time of the year? I'm not sure. Lots of stress in our lives. Got running around the last minute to make sure we have everything we need for that Christmas celebration. We can't forget about our list. We got to remember, remember Tom, Dick, and Harry, and all oh, the financial costs that's involved. Can I really afford to go out and spend so much money on people? And there's lots of stress. Now, even when it comes to COVID-19, there's even more stress because there's more people alone now. And who wants to be alone when it's supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year. <sighs> it makes you think, doesn't it? And one of my other songs that I'd like to sing, and Kent's actually going to help me with one, because I'm going to make mistakes. Remember where we were going to stop? Okay. Uh, uh, and I'll the corner. Okay. Here. Change. It happened when 
you got those extra bills that came in, comes in, and you have to make sure you know your money goes to your furnace, money goes to your window. You know, you got priorities. So I went to this person. I said to them, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but can we not do gift exchange this year? Because I don't, I don't have the money. So my understanding was the person was perfectly fine. But found, found out later that person was upset, and that anger went towards me because I could not buy a gift that year. It is interesting. What is a perfect gift? I don't have a clue. And you people who have to deal with your wives, I pray for you every year because it probably can't be easy. Christmas. I, you know, it's interesting. I've been talking to my mom a lot, and I do talk to my mom once a, once a week, every Sunday morning before I come to church. And our conversations, for some reason, has been quite deep lately, and I, I don't know why. But we're talking about gifts and talking about growing up, and I, I have some memories about growing up, and I'm going to share some of those in a moment. But my parents did their best to make sure that their kids, all seven of us, and how in the world they survived with seven kids, I don't know. Because I know that each one of us drove them nuts. But they provided for their kids the best that they can. And Christmas may not have been fancy, with lots of decorations, but it was special because they made it a point. And I know my mom said that every time they, they would find gifts for themselves, there was something practical, something that the family needs, something that the family could use. So it's really served no selfishness on their part. Because what is Christmas? Is it about the gifts or is it about relationship? And I know in my life, when I think about Christmas, I think of relationships. When I was in Dunville, Ontario, Christmas was spent at the Dunville Youth Center, helping people, serving people, doing dishes. I've been doing dishes for 56 years. I'm used to doing dishes. But those times when we sat together and talked to one another, that was a Christmas joy. Or during the New Year's Eve, when we had an all-night New Year's Eve party, we would leave the Dunville Youth Center, we would walk down the street, we would walk on the um, bridge in Dunville, we started dancing on the bridge, just having a celebration. But it was relationship. And when I think of Broadway first, when I think about Christmas, again, I think about relationships. I think about those times when people come into the kitchen and help, one time, Beth Gala came into the kitchen. She gave me hack because I was doing dishes by myself. But then she came and helped me. And all those times where I would do dishes with Lee, Frank, Ruben, uh, Mit uh, Mitchell, Durex, doing dishes together, but it was a relationship. Talking to one another, another one, sharing with one another. Working with Kevin and Richard, and blame me, Reverend, uh, Kevin and Richard, they are nuts when you work with them. But it's fun. Because that is Christmas. It's a relationship with one another. And I believe that we need that more than we need gifts. We need to find more time to share with one another, to go out for coffee, to have dinner, to share. Because that's what it's about. When it makes you think, though, isn't that what we should be doing all year round? The Bible says that we are to love one another, not wait until December to love people, not wait till December to do something special for people, but to love people. He says, a new commandment I give unto you, love one another. And John says, he that loved knows God, he that loved not knowing not God, because God is love. And we who are believers get that inside us and then we go out and love one another. Let me paraphrase 1 Corinthians 13. If Paul writes, basically, if you don't do things out of love, you're just making a bunch of noise. We as believers are to love one another all year round. 
to go and help those who are in need all year round. To do something special, not because it's December the 25th, but because that person is special. And that's kind of the Christmas spirit. But then you ask me, well, what about December the 25th? What's the point? Uh -huh. December the 25th is a celebration. It's a celebration of the birth of Christ, the God who became man, Emmanuel, God with us. This is a birthday, that birthday party that we are all invited to. And I know not being one of the most popular kids in school, I'm still invited to this birthday party. And I'm still invited to celebrate during this time as a birthday party. And yet the neat thing about this birthday party is we get the gifts. We give ourselves to God, but He gives us something much more. He gives us of Himself. He gives he give us, uh, us Him. That God became man to go among us so that we can live. And I do know people come up to me sometimes and says, you know, Jesus was not born December 20, 25th in the year zero. I don't care. What I care is, he was born. That's why I celebrate. But you know, a lot of the things that happened at Christmas was because of a pagan holiday. I don't care. Because I can take these things that once were made for pagan rituals and use them to go for God who is worthy of my praise. And that's why I do it. Short and simple today. Two things. To love one another regardless of the time of year. And take this time to celebrate. Celebrate the one who is worthy. The one who gives us so much. The one who gives us life, joy, peace. Uh, it's sometimes overwhelming when you think about all that Christ has done for us. So yes, take this time, take December 25th and celebrate and have a party. Rejoice because of what he has done. Amen? Amen.
perfect, but that we come together to share the love of Christ. And I think that's what makes it special in all that we do. You know, if, if, if perfection was something we had to do all the time, I'm in deep trouble. So I'm glad that we can gather together today to share Christ's love. And I do pray that this week would be a special week. Please join us on Christmas Eve at 7 o'clock. I think it would be a special time. Be different, but I think it would still be special. Now to the one who came as a child to bring us life, to the one who loves us and see over us, the one who brings us hope and joy, the one who could turn a disaster into victory, the one who des deserve our praise, the one who's always with us. In Christ's name, amen. amen.